Well, good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday. I believe it's the 18th of December. Where the year is going, I, I'm, folks, I'm not kidding you. I, we're going up to Miami on Friday with the kids and the family, and I'm thinking it's still summer vacation. <laughs> and in Miami, it'll probably be high 70s. So for all, for all I know, it's going to be summer for me. Anyway, let's talk about the market. We're going to open up in about an hour and 20 minutes, but we've got some overnight data. So eyes are turning from trade war to impeachment. Here are, in a nutshell, here's the things were, here are the factors the market is dealing with. Latest economic data, not bad at all. Not bad at all, actually. China, US trade war, fears are settling down. Brexit, we've got clarity. So things are looking better. The only factor right now that the market has to assimilate is the impeachment. And I know, I know you're rolling your eyes and you're thinking to yourself, why do, what do we need this impeachment for? Here's the thing. I think we're going to make a lot of noise. I think we're going to have a lot of what to do about nothings. And I think nothing's going to come off of it. As a matter of fact, I have not seen any evidence in the stock market um, putting any value into this impeachment. So I'll keep you posted on that. But so far, as far as the stock market's concerned, impeachment, what impeachment? So that's positive. Another thing that's positive, if you look at the S&P 500 yesterday, it only closed up barely, I mean, 0.02%. And I know it's nothing, and I know I'm grabbing at straws here, but look at the Russell 0 0.50, 0 0.2, 0 0.50. You see the smile on my face? China. Resolution of China means resolution of the small caps falling behind. These things are making, they're, they're making a comeback. I'm telling you right now, look at the two-year chart of the Russell. Look at this high. We're going to come up here before we even out. So we're, we're heading up there, and I'm going to tell you I told you so, and you're going to be thinking, why didn't I buy the small caps? I'm telling you, buying small caps, they've got this way to go till they reach clarity. This happened. This happened right here because of China, because we were going into a trade war. We're now coming out of a trade war. So we're still outperforming. And I promised you that I would keep you on track, and I'm, I'm focusing on this every day because this is really, really important right now. Now, I want to show you my sectors. I want to update this just in case in case things have changed. I don't think they have. And markets are fairly neutral right now. There's not there's nothing really uh crazy going on. One thing that really bothers me a lot, a lot is the fact that we're not that we're not humming in the same. These sectors have a rhythm, a natural market rhythm, and the fact that consumer discretionary and utilities are close to each other now consumer discretionary was below utilities a few days ago finally consumer discretionary is coming up consumer discretionary should be right next to technology there should be there's very little difference between technology and semi and consumer discretionary especially especially when you take the semiconductors when you take that separation between the semiconductors and other tech stocks away. Semiconductors are rallying because of China, but now the consumer discretionary stocks should come up. We're not, you know, tariffs are off the table. This is huge. So this is positive, but I'm not seeing a, a um, I'm not seeing sectors acting in concert. I'm seeing fragmented sectors, which happens where the stock market's overbought. Now, yesterday I showed you the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500. S&P 500 trading above the 200-day moving average. And we were at about 76%, and I showed you that over the last five years or 10 years or three years, anytime we go above 75, we have a cool-off period. Now I wanna show you the percentage of stocks above the 50-day moving average, which is a little more responsive because it's a shorter period of time. So we're right now at the 73.65 level. This is five years. Let me go to 10 years. This is 10 years. So this is like giving you guys a back test. Take a look at what happens every time we go above these two levels. Now, we've only gone above 82, 83, one, two, three, four times. 
in the last 10 years. Let's look at 20 years. I love looking at this data. In the last 20 years, the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 trading above the 50-day moving average went above the 80th percentile one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. That's over 20 years. Not bad, right? 20 years. Now, look at how often it goes above 73%. Quite often, right? But it doesn't make it all the way up here. And when it does, it cools off. It cools off. It cools off. It cools off. So the odds are we're very close to a top, not a long-term top, a short-term top, just enough to get us right here to the 200 day moving average to the 50 day moving average maybe even a little less maybe just a congestion back down but the markets are overbought not only are they overbought we're having divergence as i showed you yesterday and we're having this divergence in all major sectors finally let me get to the end of this nasdaq 100 i rarely talk about the nasdaq 100 but check out momentum levels on the nasdaq 100 right now all right this is the percentage of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average, which is very dynamic. Remember, uh, NASDAQ has a lot of volatility, so there's a lot of dynamics up and down. This is a 10-year chart. How many times have we gone above this level over the last decade? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Seven times in the last 10 years. Are you willing to take that chance? I'm not. We're overbought, folks. We're above 80th percentile. That's telling me this market is grossly, grossly, grossly overbought. Overbought. Um, this is this is this is really high, really, really high. Let's look at 20 years. I know you want to look at 20 years, and this is like really having a back test. Look at it. 20 years. Look at the line. I'm making the line right there. You can count on one on two hands how many times we went above 80th percentile folks, we're almost, we're at 81 and a half. I'm going to repeat that for the mic a little closer. We've only gone above 80% in the last two decades, 20 years, not 20 days, not 20 months, not 20 weeks, 20 years. That's longer than some of you, your kids have been around. Certainly my kids. We've gone above this level. I can count on my, on two hands. So can you. The link is right up here. You can just go to that link. I'm, this is not a conspiracy. I'm not making this up. I'm just pointing out momentum, 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 momentum. This drives markets, all right? So as of right now, taking the fact that we're grossly overbought, taking that into account with the fact that we're diverging, as you can see right here, taking that into a fact that we're overbought, according to the RSI, it's telling me we're going to go south. Not a lot, but a little cool off. So you've got you've got uncertainty over impeachment. Not a big deal. Technically, though, you've got the Nasdaq 100 screaming overbought, screaming overbought. Not on a short term basis. Both on a short term and ultra long term basis. When I say long term basis, I'm talking 20 years. Max is what? Max is probably 20 years. 2000. Yeah, it's it. 20 years. Look at this. How many times does it go above 80th percentile? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, if you got 11 fingers, <laughs> the bottom line is we're grossly overbought on the NASDAQ. We're on the 50-day line. We're grossly overbought on the 50-day on the 50-day line on the NASDAQ. We're grossly overbought on the 50-day line on the S&P, or at least really getting there. Uh, we have a fragmented sectors that are not trading in concert, which is like, one side is pulling the one way, the other one is pulling the other way. And we have divergence. Uptrend, downtrend. So we've got a lot of things pointing to a minor downside. None of these factors, interestingly enough, none of the factors that I've shown you um, are, are saying we're going to be in deep, deep trouble. They're just saying we're going to cool off. We need to cool off, folks. We really do. Markets are just ragingly overbought. It would be great to cool off. The problem is we've got a Christmas rally, and the way I'm seeing it now, unless we have a major cool off this week, I don't think we're going to get one. I don't think we're going to get one. We're getting too close, and we haven't seen that downside. We need to have some downside so that we can come up. Right now, with the way things I'm seeing, things are, markets are just stretched out. So 
just too many negatives, short term, very short term negatives. NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, divergence in all three sectors, uh, fragmented sectors, not good. Interestingly, the only thing the market's not focusing on is the, or pricing in is the impeachment. Folks, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Stay out of trouble. I'll give you a full update. We have jobless claims tomorrow. We may see some movement in the bond market. Talk to you then. Oh, if you guys are getting something out of these videos, send me an email. Tell me what you want me to cover. Support at marketgeeks.com. Um, we also post these on the WealthPress Facebook channel and on the Market Geeks YouTube channel before the market opens. Talk to you soon.